What is up guys and of course welcome to my wrap up video for the Mount Moon Battle Association in Season 2. My god, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and yeah, this was a very, very nice league. I do encourage you guys to check them out on Twitter. They are just really, really nice people. And um, like I said, I had a blast this season and uh, I'll definitely consider coming back when the Sun and Moon comes out somewhere in the future. Probably not directly as the season starts in season 3, but who knows, you know, I might change my mind. But what I'm trying to get at is that this was one of the best leagues I've ever been a part of. Having the Smogon basically like the UCL was super, super interesting. And it made for a lot of interesting battles, and uh, I do end up with 9 wins and 2 losses, which is not all that shabby. It's definitely my strongest league I've ever done, I do believe, on record. Sadly, I did lose in the semi-final, and while it does suck, I still can't stress enough that, you know, I had a lot of fun playing these games no matter what, building for them, and of course with this team, what could possibly go wrong, right? Uh, a lot of just good people have been part of this league, and I was so happy to um, eventually make playoff, of course, and um, yeah, I really can't say much more than that, I definitely, like I said, encourage you guys to check them out when it comes to Season 3, and um, with that said, I'm just gonna go over the kill and death ratio for every mon I drafted. Of course, having the Mega Metagross was such a deal breaker from the start, but it definitely didn't do as much as I was hoping for. Uh, having, of course, the, the rumor of how strong that Pokemon really was. But with this draft disbalance, there are born to be Pokemon that simply do better for the matchup. And Metagross might have been overhyped because this team is just that good, even with or without it. So with that said, let's go over the mods I drafted and the kill and death ratio. So starting off with of course Mega Metagross, and I actually named him Sigma. For anybody who knows that, Sigma is of course uh, the bad guy in Mega Man X. I kind of feel he fit the bar being, you know, the virus of the, the meta basically, so there's something called the Sigma virus. Nobody caught up with that sadly, but I, I like the idea of it. Uh, it didn't really do all that much for my team outside of actually being probably a very very good wall breaker and fit the bar really nicely there. He had a few crucial games where he should have worked a lot better, but due to me not playing all that well, he didn't get the chance to do it. Such, of course, as semi-finals where I do believe I messed up, which is not included, of course, with the kill-death ratio. But outside of that, I'm really glad to get the chance to use Mega Metagross. I think it's a very, very flexible, uh, well, possible um, sweeper, but yeah, I I'm not liking it as much as I thought I would. Having that said, I, I thought it was really nice having it here, and uh, I'm glad I've tried it. Though the Pokemons that are follow up here are definitely the one that did a lot better. So used to poem, of course, my um, <laughs> my Sumeril. Um, really like the name of used to poem. I, I can't really help it. I used this guy a lot. I, I really did. And uh, while the kill death ratio doesn't reflect, you know, how well it really did, it definitely rarely died. It, it was used a lot, it was used to overpower a lot of opponents and uh, with Aqua Jet, Choice Band, or Assault Vest or even Wakai Berry, this guy just took kills, you back and forth. It was definitely one of the few mons that could stay in, take out something, then get back in. Uh, one of the funniest times I ever had with the Asumriel, I never thought I'd actually enjoy using it, but the combination of it with Superior Wally makes it really good and Sap Zipper again Superior in my Week 10 game, yeah. That shit was messed up. I loved that. I thought it was awesome. So, um, I definitely would consider using a Sumerill again because this guy was dangerous. A lot, really. We're gonna follow that up with Safira, which actually was used just as much as a Sumerill, but with a different role. And it kind of sad, sad. So you see, it, it was used seven times, um, and I didn't necessarily kill things with it. And it was basically because this Pokemon was basically a healing witcher or a defogger, it was definitely a supporting role most of the time. Now, it did get like a few kills, and in the semi-final this guy was... Hmm... If only I used it better. If only I used it better, I would I could probably wrap the game up with this Pokemon individual. So, I'm glad I drafted Latias, uh, or Latios. No, it's Latias, damn it. <laughs> I never say them right! But um, it's been one of those mods that, uh, due to its bulk and um, supportive set and offensive pressure, this guy was a Pokemon I could use, you know, time in and time off, and um, it basically supported the team quite effortlessly. So I'll definitely would really redraft this Pokemon. Now for you, pick we got Mammoth One or Forkbed. 
and I didn't really use this as much as I was really mad at myself doing. Now, it, it did come into a role of it using um, a lot of berries and stuff like that when it was used, and it was basically a self rocker and nice shotter. But I really don't have too much to say about Mammoth Swine. Mammoth Swine didn't do as much as I wanted to, but it was basically because all the other mods were slightly better or saw the issues better. Having that said, Mammoth Swine in the games it was in was a game changer. It did a lot of damage and yeah, basically wall break the team. And of course, like a freeze try makes this mod very, very interesting. But like I said, I really wish I used it more often, but as the matchup were going, there were simply so many other Pokemons that did so much better. Having that said, Mammoth Swine is an incredibly dangerous mod, for sure. Now the next one is a mod I really thought I was gonna use more often, but I didn't do. Entei. And I really, really don't know why, but um, I guess the matchup just wasn't there, and for a few battles I definitely decided not to have a defog, which meant that Entei could be whittled down and I don't want to play that game. So I used him in week 1, uh, I do believe week 6, and in week 9. In week 9 is where Entei shines, uh, definitely up maneuver the opponent really, really nicely. But yeah, Entei just wasn't the mon I was really aiming for. Having that said, it, it died once uh, of the 3 games it was using, it did kill stuff. So uh, who knows, you know, with the right matchup and ideas, I might have tried Entei. It was usually on the list, but in the I'm not coming. I do believe my favorite game is week 1 when I had a Shuka Berry on it where it was never utilized at all. But my god, it would have been so nice to get Magic with that. But as it stands, I really like Entei at least. Another mod I definitely didn't use as often as I probably should have was Alpha Max or Heracross. I, I do believe I've used it three times? Yeah, against a Snorlax, against a Mega Aggron. The two games I lost actually. And then against my last opponent with Superior, where Moxie just basically swept him. Um, I don't really know why I didn't use it more often. I, I think it's a good Mon, but um, I guess the same reason as Entei, just the matchup wasn't there all the time. And usually I had other mods who could perform the same role safely or safe, safelier. And um, Heracross is a good necessity Mon, and you know, outmaneuvers a lot of Pokemon. So. It definitely was as relevant as some other mods, it just the matchup wasn't there for me to do well with it. Uh, a lot of the matchups here were slightly faster than Heracross, and I do believe that was a factor for a few matchups with me just avoiding it completely and walling my opponent out instead. And now we're gonna look at the mod I think I used the most, Necromedusa! And uh, I don't know what to say, Jellicent has been like the champ for this season for me. Um, rapid Spin block is definitely something that I never really encourage myself to you know, try to get, but it fit the bar. The way of it being able to deal with Rapid Spinner by offensively pressuring them due to typing, it's um, it's something else. And uh, you know, even with knockoff, Colobur solves the worst kind of situations, and uh, yeah, just overall, love this mod. I think it's one of the best mods I ever drafted, and definitely. Aramon that I do believe overall is very, very um, forgotten as when it comes to what it can possibly do. Uh, it barely died on me and of course it got a lot of kills, even though all of them being slightly more passive. But as it says, Necromedusa, one of the MVPs in this draft format for sure for me. So anyone remember when Tangro was RU? Yeah, I got him. Now, I can't really say too much about Tangrove. It didn't do too much for me in this league, but the thing it did was probably the more important part. That was walling stuff, coming against the matchup, staying, retaliate. It, it did get some badass moments. It also got some flat, at, uh, flat moments, basically, I was trying to say, uh, where it just basically falls. And I think the stats really reflects that. It did basically do, you know, got some few kills here and there and then fall. Uh, I like Tangrove as a defensive grass typing, and it's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But um, this time it, it had a rough, rougher time against a few matchups. Having that said, it did make sense for a lot of matchups, and its move pool really solved a few riddles for me. So at least other ones could break through due to the damage I put the Tangrove would do him before it fall. So definitely one of my most valued Pokémon in this league. And here comes the Desotroya! And yeah! <laughs> I didn't use him all that much either. 
A Rhyperior right is an awesome Pokemon nonetheless, but definitely if the, I believe the matchup could adjust for it, then I avoided it completely. Having that said, I used it with Rindleberry twice and it paid off both times. Um, I really like um, Rhyperior, right definitely one of the safer self rockers I had. And outside of that, um, its defensive capabilities forced out so many matchups that it's not even funny. Um, I never pulled out the rock polish sweep that I was trying to go for, but outside of that, it had a lot of kills on its belt. Basically, it took a hit to retaliate and killed something. It died probably as much times as it was used, I actually never made it survive a battle, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, it did what it was supposed to. It got up rocks, it damaged stuff, and just was a pain in the ass for my opponent to deal with. So Desotroya, you're the champ. And now we come to the po probably Pokemon I used probably the least, Manetric. I used it once and it, it did serve its purpose. I used it with a salt vest and um, th the idea was to um, lure Keldeo in for um, for going for a sur or a Skull or Hydro Pump to survive it and then retaliate with a Thunderbolt. Um, having that said, that's really all it did and uh, Manetric is actually a very very good electric type even though it recites it and you it still is one of those mods that has a good niche going for it. For, for electric types that are available or you, this is probably one that stands out a little bit due to Flamethrower being such a huge part of that. And of course, you know, with Empire and whatnot, they can actually work around rather nicely. And yeah, I like it. Sadly, it wasn't utilized as much as I hoped. But um, the same goes for my next Pokemon I drafted, which uh, is actually Garbodor and I'm actually just gonna keep recording because there are only so many things I can say about them or should I say Barbarossa kinda love that name no kills, used once, died once uh, anti-lead, spike lead with um, yeah spikes obviously and I think that was all it did I did use it in semi-finals sadly it wasn't utilized the way I was hoping for but yeah Garbodor has has its niches and a very very good ones at that but um, I never really had been forced to use them. I had no possible team that was going for toxic stalling or anything like that. So um, just having a stationary poison type, which is helpful, but not required for pretty much any matchup. I do believe, like I said, I used it twice. One in the regular games in the last week, really. And uh, one for, of course, the semi-final. Um, probably could have utilized it more, but like I said, due to the overarching extremely good mods I've drafted, it never was on the map that I had to had it. So probably my MVP for this season is Tauros. I, I don't know how it got so many kills. I, I <laughs> It was a beast. Uh, it never missed a rock climb. Uh, Sheer Force Life core with a special orientation to it. it. Did make sense for a lot of matchup and it did kill stuff that people never really expected it to do. I can't tell you how many times people stayed in against it, thought it could take a hit and then get a special hit on it, like, oh shit, I'm screwed. And that's the thing with Tauros, due to its actually niche speed here, it does stuff really well. It's not a perfect Pokemon by any means, but for this kind of league format where you can outspeed Pokemon, it becomes clear that it could be dangerous and it was dangerous a lot. So, Tauros definitely MVP for this season, and I think overall got the most kill out of any Pokemon in this league. And I'm glad I drafted it, it was a perfect champ. But yeah, that's that's the wrap up. Um, all I can say here is that, do check out the games I had, I'm gonna of course link that uh, playlist down below if you wanna check them out. Um, definitely check out the first week and the second week, I do believe those games are super super strong, super even. But also the ones with um, curse lags so against slow, slow formula. No, no slow formula. Oh, great. Anyway, calling slow. I kind of feel bad slowing, calling him slow. But um, also one of the more interesting games, and probably the more hexy one, because I do win that by a bit of luck. And just overall, I had so many good battles. Uh, Nasser, Bren, both of them having the teams that actually defeated me. Um, those games were also interesting because they actually outmaneuver me, which is always cool to see and quite painful to play, but you know, it's cool watching them. Uh, but yeah, with that said guys, thank you so much for watching this season and supporting me, and hopefully we'll come back for season two, but like I said, I can't make any promises until the sunny moon is out. Until the next time, guys. That is English for you. <laughs> 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.